So I've, I've known Haifa sort of like for more than 20 years, and I've known Munzer as well for more than 20 years. And when I think of Haifa, it's like, I, and I've, I've spent a lot of time in sort of hanging out with them, speaking to them, talking about this and that. So when I read Haifa, right, I can visualize them, right? I can hear their voices, right? I can hear Haifa's voice in her Arabic. Right. Um, so, um, and this is what about what I mean by embodiment. That experience in, embodied in me, and when I sort of like try to convey what she's saying in Arabic in English, right? I, 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 I can sort of pretend that I'm trying to recreate her voice, right? Her, her body movements, right? When she's telling me about, let's say, something, right? But I, I can't give an example. <laughs> I can't give an example, but I can give an example of Munder, right? When I'm being stubborn, right? Munder would say, be like that. Yeah, <laughs> be like that. Uh, something, so th there's a lot. So, so sort of when I translate, there's a, there a, a, a excerpt from Package Life, which is a collection of vignettes, right? Um, each of them can be read as a short story and all to that, they can be read as a novella. Um, she's talking, th th there's a story about a goldfinch that is housed in the kitchen. So when I was reading that passage, I can, I can conjure up, right? The picture of the kitchen, and where can even imagine where the can, the goldfinch is is placed, and I can also conjure up. Okay, it is a physical experience, visceral experience of how Munder and Haifa are talking, even though right the characters are not necessarily Munder or Haifa. Right. So so there's that part, right? And the other part, um, which is more relevant to the two sort of like pieces that we're going to look at, is um, the, 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 the visits to the shrines, right? And, uh, and what it means uh, for, uh, uh, for readers of Arabic, right? Um, for uh, Western readers of Arabic. Uh, I, I, so we'll have to test that, but for me as a reader, but I'm going to explain me as a reader and the difference between possibly Libyan experience and Iraqi experience. So in, in Libya, a, a Sufi saint, Sidi Abdeslam, right, is in everybody's radar, right? So if you're driving a car and a, a sort of uh, a, a wolf, right, runs out of the car, right, and you break suddenly, right, you don't say Bismillah, right? You say Sidi Abdeslam. Right, uh, so that there's that Sidi Abdeslam. So everything, and you, you sort of you go to the shrines of Sidi Abdeslam. You give gifts and you make wishes, and if you are good, your wishes will come true. Right. So that's when I was reading Haifa. Right. However, when we started translating some of the Arabic phrases, right, then we came upon this issue of okay, how do the Sunni say it? How do the Libyans see it, and how do the Shiites say it? Okay, so is that shall we start from there? Right? Is, do we? Uh, I think it's better, probably. I just wanted to highlight highlight few points which Marina mentioned and you mentioned as well regarding translation. Uh, I, my own experience, probably, other than your translation, which is absolutely, I think it's the best. Uh, and my book's been translated by various translators, I mean, whether in, uh, here in, in Britain or in, in the States. And uh, I wasn't pleased with them. And I'm having a terrible time at the moment with the translation of the uh, very small book, which is Hafla Lithaira, written by the Palestinian uh, Asirat, the hostages or the ex-prisoners in Israeli prisons. It's been published in 2007, and until now, I think we had, I had three translators working, one after the other, on this small book, and none of them really is up to, uh, I mean, you read it and something almost dead. It lacks something, you read it, because probably I'm not excellent at English, but I can feel. 
and I know the Arabic, I know what it really is. So it's a big problem, really. And no wonder uh, we have real shortage of translators, especially from Arabic to English. I don't think the Arabic, in, the English into Arabic is even better because the market, the bookshops in the Arab world uh, bombarded by every single book being translated immediately within months sometimes with no copyright whatsoever, but it's there. And I think it does more damage than if it's been left and not translated altogether. And as Munder mentioned in Tunisia, pity that the Institute for Translation been already uh, abolished even for uh, the College of Translators, which produced very, very good. And uh, we, in our experience, that translators in North Africa, Arab North African countries, uh, Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria are much better than the rest. Uh, except probably for uh, Lebanon, I think, and to a certain extent probably Syria. But this experience of small book not to be able to translate. But the other, which you mentioned also, is uh, my first uh, memoir or a novel, which uh, through vast halls of memory. And that's, I worked together, despite my not very good English, with a poet. So I did the draft, whatever it is, and we sat like every single chapter, every single page, and we worked together. It took us over a year, but it came really good in the end. So we had both. So there is a way around it if there is real shortage of if in a translation. Uh, and uh, when she mentioned about uh, travels in writing. Uh, my, uh, the mention of travelers or the literature or travel literature in my writing, really, when I read it, when I read it back and look at it, it seems like this is the focus, actually, for some reason. Uh, and in so many books, whether even when I'm into activism and into political and social uh, books, it's about place, moving from one place to another. It's about when you are forced to leave your own place, not by choice, but when you are forced. And it seems like you carry it with you wherever you go, regardless how fantastic and beautiful and you settled in the new place but you carry that with him, especially if you are in exile. So this is about places and exile and how to convey what's happening to those. And it's various characters, various characters from one place to another, moving the movement in places until it reached at one of the short stories, a book of short stories, where I got them static. They don't want to move, all of them. One of the characters, which I think when, when she translated Al uh, it's there is this woman who is sitting near uh, a bank till, and she doesn't move from there. She's sitting there, stuck almost to the wall. She's begging, maybe. She's watching people. We don't know because she's not really watching people. She is looking at the wall. But in this static state of her, not moving, refusing to move, is she's dreaming about other places. So now it's the movement or the journey or the travel becoming more into dreams, into imagination, the imagining of movement while they're not moving. And it's repetitive. It's almost like a repetitive and reoccurring uh, theme uh, in the writing. This is about travel. But also, just I, I'll, I'll go very quick on this. Uh, in Iraq, uh, really, I mean, uh, I was checking on when I was reading about uh, travel. I've noticed that most Iraqi writers, we don't have this genre in general. We don't have the travel literature. And that's when I came to think about why is that, especially when I was looking at the list of uh, awards given to travel writers. Mm. And I only noticed in the last probably 20 years, we only had two Iraqis who got the award. 
Lutfiya uh, Dilemi mm -hmm. and I think Farouk Youssef, both mm -hmm. of them got books. So why is that? I start to think. Uh, to think is, I've realized we belong to a generation that 1958, after the revolution, the political situation, it wasn't about reading uh, your Islamic heritage. Iraq became a communist country. So we were communist, and communist, we were as communists, we brought not knowing much about religion uh, at all. I mean, I, I looked around, no, no one, I didn't find anyone fasting or praying or anything. We were communists. We were celebrating peace, uh, doves in the air, we have parades and all that. This is what I've been brought up with. And we look down on whoever, at whoever reads history. By history, I mean Islamic or anything being written during the, what they call, we call the Islamist or Islamic empires. So they became empires rather than our heritage. The nation heritage, become, we looked further than that, back into history, ancient history. So we became the Babylonian, the Assyrian, uh, all that glorified. And we started to look about our role models and heroes and it's Gilgamesh epic, epic which we studied and read and all the literature became into that. But Ibn Battuta, we didn't read. Uh, other travelers, we didn't because they were exploring, exploring for knowledge and that is not good uh, for the nation at that time. So that's been pushed aside until the 80s. Mm. when the Iraq-Iran war and we started to try politically to regain uh, regain is our Islamic or politically identity in order to fight another war. So something is the whole thing. But uh, also, I mean, it's, it's uh, I myself, I only started reading this and also the books available in the markets, in ah, bookshops. Of course, yeah. There weren't really. It's very difficult to find the old books or write old by old writers, because most of the books are mostly very cheap, like pennies you pay, and you get them translated from the Soviet Union. We got it flooding the market, so we've been brought up to Dostoevsky, Turgenev, and all the writers. We didn't know much about our own history, so there was interruption. We were interrupted, and that's been reflected on our writing at a later stage, whether it's fiction, about our analysis, how we see the world, the whole thing, be reflected on our own personalities even at a later stage. But uh, I, I don't want to go, I'm always, in, I don't want to go on, but uh, the time I started to read Ibn Battuta, Ibn Khaldun, and all that, it was when I, I came to London, funny mm. enough. So I am someone who is, I have the distance now. And I start to realize how much I missed, how much we missed our generation. And the backlash we see now is about all this uh, interrupted history. In it. So it appeared in the novels. I've taken it, whether it's being used, I'm trying to regain my own history, the history which I missed. So regaining what I missed, uh, especially in uh, writing about Baghdad and keys to a city. Uh, obviously, I mean, you cannot write about Baghdad without the history. No way. Baghdad actually is history. When you live in it, when you see it, when everything is history there. So you are going to deny a huge chunk of yourself and everything you know about if you don't look into. And that's when all the excerpts from uh, <coughs> travelers and history coming out in that book rather than, but it also appeared in various places. Well, it appears so, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, so maybe what, what we could do is really talk a little bit about style, right? Because when you write, you're not, um, very, uh, you, you don't aggressively sort of like go back to that tradition. 
and inject it into your writing. It's not like Bin Salim Hamish, who rewrites explicitly the autobiographical travel accounts of Ibn Khaldun. It's not like Ibn Naguib Mahfoud, who, who rewrites, or on the surface rewrites Ibn Battuta. But it becomes just a sort of like a, a, a part of the fabric of your yeah. prose, right? So it's evocative, and that's your style. It's very ev evocative. In a way, you, you never state, you, know, mm -hmm. you don't state your ideolo ideology, mm -hmm. you don't state your relationship to this travel writing very explicitly. Yeah. So, uh, no, there, there is a flaw, I think. It's, uh, it comes like a natural flaw is uh, when you have the two rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates, and we have so many of those little rivers, smaller mm -hmm. rivers coming through it. So. I, I think this is what I was probably uh, working on, uh, mostly in the novels rather than the short stories. It's short stories different. Uh, so they flowing. Uh, was, uh, but also I, I wanted always the connection, the continuity. The continuity is such an important issue in the all over Middle East because whenever there is political uh, turmoil or change, we try to abolish everything before and we start from zero. And this has really been affecting the, our lives in, in a big way, affecting this. Uh, we are interrupted mm -hmm. and we think every time we are establishing from zero mm -hmm. and we beginning from zero. So that we lack the accumulation. And unless we have this, is, so this, I, I was aware of it. I didn't want even my characters, the people who live in Baghdad, who is like, one of them is a pigeon, uh, looking after pigeons and whatever. I find him really belongs somewhere else also. He was, he, he goes even deeper in history and he evolved and continued uh, into, the, into the presence. Uh, but uh, a place is a huge factor. And that's when we come to talk about this, the writing workshops, and I've done with the Palestinians. For the Palestinians, the place is very important. It is about the place. Okay, can, um, I, can we sort of like, yeah. uh, the other things that sort of like, it's actually, it's interesting because you, um, a lot of it is about location and locatedness, right? Your stories. Um, but there is one, right? But there's also a part of it that is really this impulse to transcend that locatedness. Or am I misreading you, no. right? In uh, Magara, for example, in, in the cave, one of the stories in uh, the, the, the selection, right? Um, also, in the two stories that we, we have as examples, one is pilgrimage, and the other one is, what is the other one? Is episode four, Saint which Patrick. is about is Saint, Saint, Patrick, Saint Patrick, right? So you, you, it, it is about place, locatedness, experience of that place, but at the same time, it's about transcending that particular locality. So... Yeah, it's... Uh, I think it's... Uh, not as such, I mean, they... Uh, I don't know what they wanted to do, actually, those people. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but they always uh, looking for something. In San Patrick, uh, he was the, the, the man, the traveler, or the, because we can't even say he's a traveler because he only booked uh, a package tour thing. So it's different kind of even. Uh, he's, he's not a tourist, but he's not a traveler, but he, he is living somewhere else, but he is living now. So it's all this happening at the same time. Uh, they don't know what's... Uh, yeah. I left it like without them knowing uh, what will happen. Probably uh, I don't know myself what will happen. Mm. It's, uh, so it's been reflected. You know. I don't know. Um, can we sort of do some of some of that because I think yeah. that that sort of that that experience of a particular space and this this aspect right is in all the short stories that most of the short stories like including in in this translation yeah. package life but it's also that experience of this particular space transports 
you back to another space. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is. Uh, to have to find my Arabic text. Ireland, 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 right? Ireland, yeah. Uh, it's uh, so Ireland. That would be episode four. Ireland train from Dublin to West Point. Could read a bit in Arabic as well. I okay. think. Okay. Shall we? Yeah. Do you want to read? So we're going to do a little bit of two things. Like read a little bit in Arabic and then do read a little bit in English. So okay. do you want to swap? The roles you read? No, I read in Arabic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just the last last bit, right? Which, uh, I My joint it, and muscles, right? Was that, uh, okay. or do you want to start earlier than this? No, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. It's, okay. uh, can we give them a summary of what's happening? Oh, there's, in, there's an English translation right next to it. Yeah. No, I mean the whole thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you? Yeah. Why don't you? Please do. Uh, it's about uh, this man who been he just booked uh, his trip to Ireland. He wanted to see there, and it's package tour. No, he refused to have the package tour uh, this time because the whole other stories were about package tours. But this one, he and he's on the train. He meets this Irish man who persuade him that it's better to go to the pub after getting off and they became friends but uh, while they were about to just saying goodbye and hugging and kissing like any good drunk people uh, he said you have to visit St. Patrick uh, because he's a miraculous he's a saint he's everything is waliun min awliya uh, Allah is, uh, you have to, and he said, well, I'm not really, I don't believe, he's an atheist, so he doesn't want to, but anyway, he just, he was attracted deep down to this idea one day, and he went, and he joined the crowds who are, he's still hesitant, not knowing, and there is uh, an old man who approached him saying, oh, take this walking stick, will help you, he refused, so he's reluctant about the whole thing, Anyway, he started walking, things happening a lot. Is, so the change is not just about the change of the nature, the change of the scenery, the change of the people, but something deep inside him is changing. Uh, and whenever he wanted to give up, he was really recalling uh, something from his childhood, from the past, from everything. So anyway, I'll, I'll read the last uh, three paragraphs there. Uh, آلام في مفاصلي وعضلاتي والكدمات ووجهي بدأ يتورم من هجوم الحشرات فجأة أحسست ببرد شديد تيار هوائي يدفعني هل انخفضت درجة الحرارة وازداد سرعة الهواء أم أنني على وشك الإصابة بالبرد نحن على مبعدة أمتار قليلة فقط الكل يسرع اللهفة والشوق يزيدان من سرعة التسلق كبار السن استعادوا حيويتهم الصغار موعودون بأداء لعبة جديدة يا سان باتريك يا سان باتريك جئنا نزورك بضعة خطوات ونصل تقول أمي وهي ممسكة بقوة بيدي لأواصل السير معها لألا أضيع أقول متضرعا ماما ماما أنا تعبان تجيبني بصبر نزور الإمام أولا ثم نرتاح سترى بنفسك كيف نرتاح حول المرقد مع الحشود ندور أمواج من أجساد بشرية تلتف حول ضريح مسيج في قلب دائرة بشرية تدفعني سيقان الحجد أسمع صوت الدليل وهو يسير أمامنا قارئا بصوت هامس قوي السلام عليكم يا أصفياء الله وأودائه السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي عبد الله بأبي أنتم وأمي طبتم وطابت الأرض التي فيها دفنتم وفزتم فوزا عظيما فيا ليتني كنت معكم فأفوز معكم. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is the hard part, right? Um, I'm, I'm going to read uh, how I have rendered it in English very quickly, uh, but I understand that we probably need to go over the Arabic and 
just pull out the nuances and we have Arabic speakers here, right? My joints and muscles were in pain and the insect bites on my face were swelling up. I felt a sudden rush of air push me from behind and turned very cold. Did the temperature drop? Did the air pick up speed or was I coming down with a cold? We were only a few meters away from the grave. Everybody was speeding up, driven by their longing and impatience. The old recovered their energy and the young were promised new games. St. Patrick, here we are. St. Patrick, come to see you. A few more steps and we'll be there. My mother had my hand firmly in hers so that I would not get lost and coaxed me to continue walking with her. Mama, I pleaded, Mama, I'm very tired. We'll visit the Imam first, she answered me patiently, and then we'll rest. You'll see for yourself now, you'll see for yourself how good you'll feel. We were so combobulating around a fenced in tomb in a large circle formed by human bodies being carried forward by the legs of the crowd. I could hear our guide recite in a strong, quiet voice, peace be upon you, the chosen friends of God. Peace be upon you, the allies of Abu, of, of Abu Abdullah. Love be to our prophet and imam. Blessed be you and the earth you lie in. What a resounding victory you won. May we share in your victory. Okay, so I mean, I think no matter what you do, right, with English, right, it, not, it cannot quite convey sort of what the Arabic can convey. So let's, let's I think, Haifa, you wanted to talk about this. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, we, you remember we, we discussed because that was the first time I, I was shocked because uh, when she was saying praying, and that is not really what I understood as praying. This is about dua. And, uh, so in Arabic, and, uh, the, the two words, one yeah. is salat, well, that's different the, than the former prayer, yeah. and dua is pleading. Is uh, You're not just pleading. No, it's something that you almost also you show your loyalty. It's pleading. It's promising to do things uh, in the future if you succeed if you happen to succeed it's a, it's a full culture it's a culture it's a is there some distinction like that in english or latin between salah which is prayer i mean prayer and Wor no, no. Not, it's, not it's worship. like invocation so it's in english i mean at least uh, Huh? It's not petition because it's petition not petition. Is, uh, huh? Supplication, supplication yeah. right? But supplication for me is a mouthful, uh, right? Yeah. Invocation, supplication, it's dua prayer. It's salah. prayer, like salah a dua. Is formal, yeah, 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 yeah. And dua is it's called from the origin yeah. da'a. Is that cool? Ya Rabbi, you know, it's, yeah. it's if you give me something, please do this for me, yeah. please. It's not the yeah, former prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, yeah. Uh, please let my children be okay. Or kind of like. Plea. A plea, plea is that's no it. Yeah. But please don't. No, it's not a plea. This is prayer. Yeah. 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 Invocation? But Invocation also, I mean, or with, or with the prayer, uh, yeah. when you pray uh, in. Uh, in Islam, anyway, in a, with a pray, you pray directly, you are connecting yourself with God. While this dua is when you have intermediate, intermediaries, also, yeah. especially with the Shia. So we have is where someone else, a saint, uh, Imam, Al Imam. Mm -hmm. And this Imam is someone who is a holy and with holy places, and we visit and we spend, I mean, half of our lives. I remember like a child, I've been there. Uh, so it's, it's, it is different. It's, uh, it's almost, uh, it has very deep cultural meaning of when you try to connect to this Imam and you are willing to sacrifice everything for this Imam in order to connect you to God as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I mean, steps of it. And that's what they, he's saying is he's calling upon uh, uh, the, uh, they've been chosen by God. So we have all the description of this person. We are going around his uh, shrine. Uh, and also about the shrine and the grave, we had this uh, discussion. Yeah. Because with St. Patrick, I cannot, I couldn't bring myself to say just a grave myself this age and everything, I thought this is a shrine. So it can't be a grave, is it? Is it the, is it the doctor, 
language where there's a second ablation as well? Is that what you're comparing? Uh, no, compa two things. One is the St. Patrick, which they were climbing to reach. They climbed to reach. Yeah. And uh, with the grave, around. and the going around of because there is a point at the while they're climbing, they have to go around. There is kind of a water fountain or someone, and they have to say seven Hail times, Mary. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, something yes, around exactly. with the yeah, thing. Yeah. 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 It's an island. It is in the island. I've never been. So. Oh, okay. And so that would be an interesting thing to look it's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. But it's, it's sort of in the story, that part has already taken place, yeah. right? So it's in the earlier part of the story. But in this part of the story, this actually, this sort of like, um, uh, takes him back in time to when he was a child. So this part is really about the, the shrine in Iraq when his yes, mother took yeah, him. Yeah. Right, right. So this this part is is really about Iraq itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, if you sort of like, um, and again, right, in uh, Sufi saints, uh, Shi'i saints, and also Christian saints, right, the language you use are not exactly the same. I don't. It's think. different. It's different. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, so here with "Salamu alaykum ya asfiya Allah wa awdaihi," for example, mm. um, and it's really, how do you um, how do you convey right asfiya Allah right here? It's sort of it's chosen friends of God. Right, but it's not really chosen friends of God. And God hasn't got friends anyway. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe he has yeah. enemies, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right, but this is like you know I, I yeah. condensed two. Yes. Well, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, because that's. Um, to go back just to, sorry, to the idea of um, you know, either supplication or yeah. entreaty or worship in or prayer. Yeah. Um, you, your point about sort of being ritual. It, it, what sort of gestures are involved? Because that might take us, if it's actually embodied in some way, to do with actions. I mean, you're talking about. They just go around, but following someone uh, who is supposedly to be also another intimidatory uh, character, mm -hmm. a religious figure who is the guide inside, who's been employed there, or just volunteer and they go around following him, repeating the same thing. Sometimes you have a little booklet. I have 50 I it, of yeah. them, small booklets. You follow and you read or whatever. But uh, so this is it. It's a shaman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there is an um, element also of sound and of voice, which perhaps connects more to the Latin verb, aura, as well, also to pray in a, in a loud, a loud mm -hmm. word. In, to make a voice or oration kind of, uh, that's the root, yes, rather than, not in Salat, instead of the prayer, the other kind of prayer. That's what I yeah. uh, visualize from my own personal experience of, mm. uh, of the words and uh, of the fact of the prayer. Mm. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. one point of view. Well, there is, in, I mean, in Christianity, there is a difference between interior prayer yeah. Yeah, and external ritual. Mm. So that would be a, w a way of looking at the yeah. vocabularies. Mm. Mm. And the thing is, in Christianity, there's a lot of Latin, which is very heavy, like veneration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a heavy word. Heavy you word. Yeah, like yeah. the supplication, particularly by concept, is a very heavy word. Mm. Yeah. As you say, the salah implies some ritual with physical action. Standing up in a certain way uh, to, to make a uh, certain whatever mm -hmm. and do a couple of movements. Mm -hmm. While dua could be a simpler one, mm -hmm. it could be just a prayer that you say. Pray that you say in any direction or something. It's like when, um, just when, moving. when Muslims go to sleep, um, when you're on your right hand side, so you go on, you used to go to sleep on your right hand side and you say, Peace be to Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So that's like a dua. So it's just it's like a blessing, I suppose. It's a blessing. Yeah, it's not it's not a prayer, it's a blessing. It's not a blessing. Not so, yeah, internal something. No, I don't know. It could be big, it could be small, yeah, yeah. you know, like dua, it could yeah, be simple, yeah. it could be complex, it could be big, yeah, it could yeah, be yeah. small, it could be anything. Whereas salat, you know, it's... Ritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, yeah, very specific. Yeah. It's rigid, yeah. it's 
it has yeah. its time in, 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 the, in, the, in its place. I suppose with Dora, you can do it wherever you are, when it occurs, you know, whatever time. Yeah. yeah. And they're becoming very almost creative, I mean, to the extent of uh, in the Sunni uh, madhab, we say these are buda, 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 innovation, innovation into it, which really doesn't go with the original thing. I'm just, I mean, highlighting this because this is one thing which we, while working on translation, uh, imagine if someone who doesn't know and they just put it like that, almost like Google Translation, what will happen to the Arabic uh, piece or text or whatever is. But uh, when you have this uh, lively, dynamic discussion with the uh, with Wenshin, <laughs> you start even to discover things, you yourself, which is brilliant. I mean, th through the eyes of others also, you can discover what you've written and what is it? What is you? What are you? Sometimes it's much deeper than just translating your work from one language to another. It's, it's a process of discovery.